the other uh, proposal I will happily accept is uh, motion H. Uh, it's an excellent way forward. It's bold. It's decisive. I'll be supporting that this evening. Thank you, Chukaramuna. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Five uh, quick points uh, or thereabouts in, in, in five minutes. First, it is an absolute utter disgrace that it has come to this that it is the backbenches of this House forcing the Government to follow a process to reach a decision. The Prime Minister should have been the one sponsoring and initiating this process. It is called leadership. But the reason time and time again she has failed to do so is because she always fails to face down the ideological zealots in her own party. Now, she has suggested that if what comes out of this process, and I hope we get a majority behind something, is at variance with what she has proposed, she may simply ignore Parliament. But this is a parliamentary democracy. The campaigns to leave the European Union were fought in the name of parliamentary sovereignty. And is she seriously saying that she can maintain any credibility or authority in her negotiations with the EU Council if she seeks to set her face against the will as expressed by the House through this process. On the substance of these motions, I will be supporting the People's Vote Amendment laid by the Right Honourable Member for Derby South, Motion M. And I commend her speech, which was excellent and explained far better than I could, why we should all support that motion. But I will perhaps just explain personally why I am doing so. As a House, we had a duty in the last Parliament to try and square the circle between the promises that were made in that 2016 referendum and what was deliver- deliverable. And that's why I voted against my heart to invoke Article 50 two years ago. But with every week that has passed, we see that not only did the campaigns to leave the European Union lie, they have broken their promises and the Electoral Commission have confirmed that they cheated too. Now, I listened carefully to the speeches of the members for Brigg and the members for Vauxhall talking about the importance of delivering upon the result of that referendum. But the problem this Parliament has been grappling with is that it is impossible to deliver on those mythical, fantastic promises that were made back then. And in the face of that disaster, and in the face of the catastrophe that we have seen unfold through these negotiations, the last resort is always to invoke the will of the people. But the simple fact is, ever since that referendum was held, all the signs are that proceeding with this flawed Brexit is far from what this country wants. After the 2016 vote, you would have thought support for what had been voted for would have gone up. But in almost every single poll, we see that support for it has fallen. And let's not forget that that is a poll that was held three years ago and 37% of registered electors voted for it. The most recent poll of the British people was held in 2017 when the Conservative hard Brexit was put to the British people and the party of government lost its majority. If that were not the case, we wouldn't be having this protracted process right now. But above all, I say this to those who talk about the will of the people. Democracy is not static. It is a dynamic thing. We did not in this country choose to have a system where you have one general election, a one-party state, and you never go back to the people for a view on things as our country and the world changes and adapts. And I just want to uh, finish on this point, actually, because they haven't been mentioned in this debate so far. It is the younger generations in this country. And I I, I heard the contribution of my neighbour in Vauxhall The younger people in our area, in our borough, which is one of the youngest in the country, will not ever forgive this parliament if it seeks to impose this disaster on them. More than two million of them have become entitled to vote since that 2016 poll, and we know that an overwhelming majority of them want to say on this process, and an overwhelming majority of them want to keep the current deal and the privileges that older generations in this country have enjoyed for years. And that is why, if in the end we are faced at being at a cliff edge, with all the catastrophe we have seen spelt out in Cabinet documents. We know what this is going to mean for people's jobs and livelihoods. If we are on the cliff edge, we haven't got that people's vote, then of course we must do what is in Motion L and revoke Article 50, because nobody, no one in this House 
has a mandate to destroy people's jobs and livelihoods. Yeah, yeah. And we know it will do that because the Cabinet has produced its own briefing papers to tell us that's a fact. That is what's at stake here. That is what we have to think about when we make this decision. It's not about us so much as it is about future generations, and it's important we do right by them. Yeah. Thank you.